the speed has now come up to 75 miles an hour so I'm just going to start pull on the power back to I'll start off at 50 which is not enough so I'll drop down to 25% power which is obviously not too and we'll just see how that works for now there's a lot there because there's a guy in orange I don't know why I call him the guy in orange because I really should say it's the orange army because it really is the orange army I don't know if you actually saw us, we went past the member of the Orange Army. In this route, they actually acknowledge you and lift their arms. Arms to, to acknowledge. Cause... So yeah, like I said, they actually lift, they lift their arms up above the head, which is what a real Orange Army person would do. To acknowledge the approaching train when they sound the horn. Just, just popping off down the shop, so let's stay here and keep doing this. Okay, the speed has dropped now to 70 miles an hour, so I'm gonna increase the power up to probably we'll go up to about 75 just to get the train. Up to 70, up towards 75 miles per hour again. As you can see it doesn't take a lot for the train to accelerate. Just gonna pull power back in. You can see we've just reached 75. We'll put it on 37% this time, which is notch three. Actually, it's maintaining approximately 75 miles an hour, which is roughly what we want to do. The ground is, is increasing very slowly. We'll throttle back just a little bit when we get up close to seven, close to seventeen six. there we have a flashing double yellow aspect so in approximately one and a half miles we will be diverging back onto what will then become the down slow I believe the speed on that turnout is 75 miles an hour but unfortunately due to the signaling giving us yellow aspects as we because we need to slow because trains that would be going at full line speed of 125 would need to slow down quite a bit for that. And there's the clashing single yellow. So what we will have to do, we will have to, we will actually have to assume that the signal following the junction is still displaying a red aspect. So unfortunately, in this route, the signals, unlike in real life, where you approach as you approach a single yellow. That's been 
you, you've been flashed down speed wise in reality that would then clear up to the highest aspect it could go whilst looking at the next signal so if the next signal was showing a green then it would clear up to green but unfortunately that's not the case in train in this route and train sim anyway so I do now need to hit the brakes quite sharply actually because the next signal is only half a mile away I think it would be really it would be really useful there if that signal did clear up or at least there was a banner repeater yeah I'd have to hit the brakes a lot harder <laughs> Left that braking quite late. As you can see now, we now have two greens ahead. Green on the left is our one. No, I'm pressing the ploy brakes. That's why this. That's why the brakes aren't coming off. So this is going to come down to an almost stop as well. And there we go, we've stopped. Let's go again. So like I keep saying, I am clearly not a good driver. One thing I'm getting a little bit concerned about now is the fact that my camera is only on two bars of battery. So, I might have to disappear. I'll let the train keep running. Just whilst I go and grab a charger. Because I don't really want the camera to um, die halfway through this. Seventy-five percent power now. One notch six. And now I'm going to cut the power because we're slipping. We'll obviously, put a bit too much power on at once. Then I'll we'll put back up to fifty percent power. And once we reach twenty miles an hour, I'll start to increase it a bit more. Five. I'll go up a bit more, so up to notch six. Twenty-six miles an hour. We're up to thirty. We'll go up one more. Up to full power. So shortly, in about a mile, we will be passing Nuneaton Station. At Nuneaton is the point where the West Coast Main Line joins up with with about three other lines, because well, two or three other lines, because you have the line that comes from the south east, sorry, south west, that comes from Coventry and that will be the line that you see just before we enter the station the line coming from the south east which will be the line across from Nuneaton sorry, not Nuneaton, Leicester so the cross country route, which is where freight's coming this way from Felixstowe would run So there's the line to Coventry on the left hand side there, the line from Nuneaton is just coming on the right. To the north west of Nuneaton station is the line, another line that goes up towards Birmingham. So 
So at Uneaton we have 36 and a half miles to Stafford. So you can see there's a train now going over the top, that's come... I think that's the sort of way they go towards Birch Coppice. I did forget to mention there is the flyover at the north end of Nuneaton Station there. It was installed not that long ago to help ease congestion because before trains that are running on the Stansted to Birmingham route and also freight trains that would be heading towards, like I say, towards Birch Coppice. I think must be, possibly Ham's Hall was that way as well, I'm not entirely sure about that. But they would have had to cross the West Coast Main Line on the flat, which I'm sure you can imagine would cause quite a few delays. The line there coming in from the left comes off the flyover, basically allows freight trains and any other train that needs to use it to join the West Coast Main Line without having to cross it on the flat. So it, it has greatly reduced congestion. member of the Orange Army on the line side there. So. I didn't actually see him until the sort of last minute. So. But he, he was still he was standing well out of the way so it's just it's just a little to just to let him know we are coming through. Even though he was not in the way or anything. Still supposed to do that if anyone's on the line side. Of course, by line side, we just mean inside the railway boundary fence. Okay, backing off on the power quite a lot there. The speed limit along this section is actually 75 miles an hour, so I just hit 76 there. We got a flashing warning because they were speeding. I'm going to leave the power in idle now because. Shortly coming up in just over a mile is a 60 mile an hour speed restriction as we pass through Atherstone Station. It's basically because there is a couple of tight curves just before that. There is a Morpeth board warning for that restriction, however it is rather small and it's a case of just blink and you'll miss it sort of thing. I think it's now coming up on the left hand side. Yep, there it is, just there. So I'm now going to hit the brakes slightly because we need to drop 10 miles an hour. And there we go, we're under 60. Be, so I'm going to put 25% power on notch 2 on just to maintain 60 miles an hour until we're cleared to go back up to 75. So we're now passing Atherstone Station. As far as I'm aware, Atherstone Station receives an hourly service which is the London Euston to Crew stopping service. Which has the calling pattern of a I think it goes Milton Keynes, then I think it goes straight to Nuneaton, 
and then cause all stations to crew via Stafford, Stoke on Trent, Stone, I think, yeah, I think it goes Stone, Stoneway, and then on to crew. We're now cleared to go up to 75 miles an hour again. So let's put it straight into full power because we go on. We go on a speed that shouldn't really affect the wheels in the sense that they might slip. It might do, but it shouldn't do. And if it does, we'll just back off on the power just to, just to let the train settle down. So we now have 30 miles to go to Stafford. I don't know if anybody can make out, but actually it says on the ETA that we're not actually going to get to Stafford for another 12 hours, and that is basically because when we reach, I think it's... Colwick Junction, something like that, just where the line towards Stoke on Trent uh, diver diverges across to the uh, east, and we go to the west. In this, in the quick drive, it always places a freight train, or usually, sorry, usually places a freight train. Didn't actually do that in the practice run I did yesterday, but there probably is one there today. So what happens is when we approach the junction, we get stopped and he gets to go through. Unfair, I know, but that's just the way the quick drive works. And it makes it a little bit more challenging, actually, because you then got to bring the train right down towards a red signal. And then, as we ended up doing, as we came away from rugby, we end up following that train all the way up to Stafford so we experience a few yellows as well just to just to keep us on our toes. The next station you can see coming up on the HUD is Polesworth station which is well I'll just take the brakes start there. And that train that station receives one train a day which is I think it's the 07, I think, it, I think it's something like 0720 from Polesworth. And that train, I think, is the London. It is the London Euston to crew route, but I think it starts. I think it either starts from Milton Keynes or Nunny or Rugby or Nunny or something like that. I believe. I believe it is the first train of the day that does the that heads up towards crew. You see there there's a passenger waiting to board said train. Right, I'm just gonna pull the power back now. If I press the right button there it is. I don't know what button I'm pressing there, but it wasn't the right one, it was, it was the button next to it. So we just pull the power back to twenty five percent or notch two just to maintain 75 miles an hour. I think the next station we pass will be Tamworth Station. And that's about 3 miles away, or maybe a little bit more. So probably working out my route knowledge is not brilliant either. Just going to increase the power just because we are falling a bit. The speed is falling down, it's dropped down to 73 now.
And you can now see Tamworth station is one and a quarter miles away. And we're now coming up on Armington Junction. Speed post we just marked there. Just saw the network rail guy just as we almost went past him. The speed post we passed just a, just a few seconds ago marked an increase in the speed limit to 110 miles an hour. And after no, Tamworth Station here it goes up to 125. Although, as, pre as I say, we are only permitted to go to 75 miles an hour. So, Tamworth Station, that is again served by the hourly Euston to crew services on the low level. I think that there might be other services that stop there, I'm not entirely sure. I believe there is a couple of Virgin West Coast services that call there each day. And then on the top, on the higher level of Tamworth Station, because it is actually split across two levels, is the line that runs from Derby towards Birmingham. That sees a much regular service, certainly as has the hourly Nottingham to Birmingham and some of them extend to Cardiff. They all stop there and quite a few of the cross-country services that run from up from, up from Scotland to at Cornwall, Devon, that sort of area, they, they most of them call there, a few pass but most of them call. So Tamworth doesn't do too bad in terms of service. Next station we pass...